This patient was referred to me regarding tooth number 14. According to the patient, the root canal was done two to three years ago by an endodontist. And the uh, patient said the um, tooth has, was very sensitive to biting, to chewing on, and um, he had constant throbbing pain. Okay. And here's the date, as you can see, about 10 months ago when this patient came to see me. So take a look here, crown here, previous root canal, gutter percha, that is out of the canal by four, five, six millimeters maybe, a large pericardial lucency here. And look, that's a broken file right there. The other canals are okay. Take a look, the other canals are fine. I can show you different angulations. So take a look. The other canals are okay, but there is a pericardial lucency here, broken file, of course, over extended, got aperture is extended out of the canal there. What's the reason for this? What's the reason for the pain and pericardial lucency and persistence of infection? It is not over this overextended got aperture. Over it's not this got a percha that's out of the canal. Almost always the reason is microorganisms. Presence of microorganisms within this canal system causes this. Not got a percha sticking out of the canal. So we discussed options with the patient. Try to see if we can save the tooth by redoing the root canal. This piece of got a percha could turn into a floater, meaning that it could just break off and cause issues, we might have to do apico. Or he could just go ahead and pull the tooth. He said, no, let's go ahead and try to see if we can save it. And here's the date, about 10 months ago. I was able to bypass the broken, broken file here, as you can see. And there was a split, there was a split here, canals, canal split, not the root split. And here you can see the split. That's the broken file here. That's the gutter percha that's extending out of the canal there. So here's immediately after I read the root canal, I did Selective endodontic retreatment, which means I only worked on the mesial canals. I did not work on the distal buccal and palatal. As you can see, they are fine. Problem is right here. You can see the gutter percha extending out of the canal. You can see the broken file right there. All right, so um, you see the split right there, the split of the canal right there that I was able to capture. I was anticipating future apical. So I obturated the entire MB1, MB2 canals along with the split and here with MTA. Again, in anticipation of possible apical in the future to just go in and do apical. You have, you have MTA here, you're set. Apical is much, much faster and simpler because you don't have to retrofill. Anyways, Again, as you can see, this was about 10 months ago when we redid this root canal for the patient. And this was just now, 10 months post-op of tooth number 14. Peripical relucency, remember that peripical relucency there? Almost completely healed, patient has no symptoms whatsoever. He was so happy. Let me zoom out so you can see the difference. This was 10 months ago. You can see that large pericardial lucency there. And this was today. Take a look. You see the difference? Beautiful, beautiful. All of that bone destruction that you see there, almost all of that bone was now is regenerated, was regenerated. Take a look here. And here's the date today, 
10 months post up of tooth number 14. To those who say, redo the root canal and go immediately to a apical, now you can see your flaw. You can see the flaw in your logic. I prepared the canals for apical, but I didn't go immediately to apical. I gave things a few months to see if non-surgical works or not. And as you can see, non-surgical, non-surgical treatment, the preferred treatment worked beautifully, worked beautifully. So this was 10 months ago. And this was today. This is another angulation. You can see the large paper lucency is almost completely gone. The overextended gutter percha did not play any negative role in the healing process. So if the overextended gutter percha was causing this peripical relucency, as some of you believe, then we wouldn't be having healing after 10 months because the overextended gutter percha is still there. 10 months ago, today. See what I mean? So don't think, I have some people say, oh, overextended gutta percha, the root canal will fail, or underextended gutta percha, and the root canal will fail. Gutta percha, the canal was obturated short, the root canal will fail, or the canal was obturated long, the root canal will fail. Or if they see something like that, they would say, oh, the cause of failure is, the cause of this root canal failure is the gutta percha sticking out of the canal, overextended gutta percha. As you can see, that's not the case. Right there, you see that? Because the overextended gutta percha is still there, but this healed. The reason, the reason we have healing here, even though the gutta percha is overextended, is because we got rid of the bacteria from inside of the canal system here. That's why this is healing. The overextended gutta percha had nothing to do over the overextended gutta percha had nothing to do with this. This this periapical lucency was created because of the presence of microorganisms in the canals. See what I mean? That's why Dr. Lin's research and study such an amazing, amazing gift to all of us. Dr. Lin who said the extent of obturation has n no effect on the success rate of the root canal. So you can obturate flush, you can obturate short, you can obturate long. It has nothing to do with the success rate of the root canal. What has to do with the su success rate of the root canal is presence or absence of microorganisms. If, they're, if you obturate short, obturate flush, flush, or obturate long, as long as there's, there are no microorganisms in the canal, this, the root canal will not fail. Root canal fails, only fails, almost always, the reason for root canal failure is presence of microorganisms in the canals. So the extent of obturation has nothing to do, has no bearing on the success or failure of the root canal treatment. The presence of microorganisms, the presence or absence of microorganisms decide whether a root canal will be successful or will fail. All right, so, and this is a proof. This is proof of Dr. Lin's study. You can see that. The extent of the gutta is still there, but the periapical lucency almost completely healed.